We're back ready to volunteer in the Valley again. This is Jean Jones, and we're a cooperative effort between CBTV at Sheraton Valley and the Long Branch Area Chapter of AARP. Our purpose is to make the community aware of where we have volunteer needs. So if you're looking for something to do, much better to know about it beforehand where you can participate if you want to or pass the word on to your family member, your group, your club, whoever might want to participate. Rather than what happens to me, I read about it after the event is over and say, gosh, I wish I'd known about that beforehand. We're going to talk today about Macon Senior Center and some of the activities they've got planned. Christine Veers is here with me today and she is going to explain, we've got at least two or three projects going on. So we're gonna have a real busy show today. So tell us what is the first event that's coming up? Well, we are really busy, Jean. Um, the first event that we have coming up is we have a uh, six week class that we started today and it's called Living a Healthy Life. And what it is, is it basically just helps you um, cope with everyday stresses. Um, a lot of times in the winter times we get down. <laughs> and so it just helps us to, to deal with that and to come up with activities that you can do that mm -hmm. would help that. Mm -hmm. um, and that is every Tuesday from 9 to 11 at the center. Um, and then we invite everybody to come and stay for lunch as well. So, And that's not just great because of the content of the classes. It's wonderful because it gets people together who otherwise might be home sitting watching the TV or staring out the window and it gets them in with some folks their own age and maybe mm -hmm. they'll find people with interests similar and maybe they'll even come and volunteer for you and that's what we're that looking for. <laughs> <laughs> we'll probably hopefully find some good volunteers out of that group too because I know you're always looking for delivery drivers and I know that there are always times when you can use backup people for the kitchen and the dining room because people do get ill especially at this time of year or they may have to be away for family or other reasons. So mm -hmm. I know you're always looking for folks to fill those slots. We are. One thing I did want to mention about this, my understanding is that these are free sessions. They are free sessions. This is through a grant through the Extension Office and everything is free. Um, you don't have to sign up for it. You just show up and, and join the class. Um, and that's all you have to do. Um, we also have coming up on February 12th, we're going to be having a ham dinner. Um, from 11 to 1 at the center. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be having ham, sweet potatoes, mashed potatoes, green beans, homemade rolls, and dessert. Um, the cost $7 for adults and $4 for 10 and under. So everybody it, goes out to eat after, mm -hmm. after church, so come mm -hmm. join us. And so I was going to point out that is a Sunday, mm -hmm. and you then use those funds for other projects and things that you need in the senior center so that you can continue with both the on-site and the home delivered meals for the Meals on Wheels. Correct. Yes. I understand you've got big plans for this summer. We do. We're excited about this. Um, we have a trip that we've planned to Colorado Springs. It's going to be a bus trip. Um, we've taken bus trips before in the past as a fundraiser. Um, this will be the first time I'm going, so I'm kind of excited about that as well. Um, but it's going to be June 11th through the 17th. Mm -hmm. um, the cost is $699, um, which is a really, really good deal when you consider it's going to be seven days, six nights. That takes care of all of your transportation, your hotel, um, a lot of your food, and mm -hmm. then sightseeing. And we mm -hmm. have some tours as well. And so then this, when you're done, Senior Center gets a, a portion of that money back. What are you raising money for right now in particular? What, what are your biggest needs? Well, d there's always, always new things in the kitchen that might break down. Um, mm -hmm. And then you just, you know, you never know. So we like to put a little bit back because mm -hmm. you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, well, if it's, if it's like around home, you don't know when the refrigerator is going to quit or 
something is going to act up one of your small appliances, whatever. Mm -hmm. yes. So how are you fixed for drivers these days for home deliveries? Well, right now, right now we're kind of in a pinch. Um, <laughs> a lot of people have gone out um, for the for the um, winter. They head south like the mm -hmm. birds. <laughs> and um, so I'm delivering a lot more these days. Um, but then we're always we're always looking for PRN drivers as well mm -hmm. for drivers that can just uh, fill in for doctor's appointments for vacation for mm -hmm. for them just being sick. Yep, so. and just like you would in the kitchen or the dining room, you need backup yes. people who can come in sometimes on relatively short notice and work for a day or a couple of days because mm -hmm. someone else isn't able to be there. Yes. So. Yes. How many home delivered meals are you doing now, roughly? We have about 90 meals that we deliver a day. So we have three different routes. We have our town route, our housing route, and then we also deliver to Bevere, which a lot of people don't know about. Mm -hmm. um, but we do have some people there in Bevere that, that have a need, so we try to, try to help that need out as well. And I know we've talked in the past about the fact that there are some folks in rural areas mm -hmm. that would like to have those home delivered meals if we could get drivers lined up. Yes. So if you live out in the country and you have a regular appointment in Macon where you might be coming in around the noon hour, call, talk to her, say, you know, I live out here so-and-so. Do you have somebody in my neighborhood who on Thursdays might like to have Meals on Wheels delivered, mm -hmm. who might like to have that hot meal and a friendly face at the door? That's right because it isn't just the hot meal that's important to the folks that receive these. A lot of times just having that contact with someone from outside may be the only person they talk to all day long. That is so true, Jean. That is true. A lot of people, they, they are, they're just lonely and they just want to talk mm -hmm. to somebody. And, and the meal does come, come in, in need, you know, they right. need the meal, but that face that you talk to, um, that means a lot to a yeah. lot of people. And it also becomes an informal wellness check mm -hmm. for a lot of our meal recipients. I know yes. that somebody is dropping by and would notice if uh, there was no one coming to the door when there should be. That's true because a lot of a lot of our people they have um, family members that live out of town, mm -hmm. and they might you know they might call every two or three days. But that time in between mm -hmm. um, would be nice for somebody to come by and just mm -hmm. just check on them. Right. So. And I'll bet you could use some helping hands too for that Sunday ham dinner. Um, I'm I I never tell anybody they can't help. <laughs> yeah, because so. I know you're going to need not just preparation, you're going to need servers, you're going to need people to clear tables and, mm -hmm. and do those incidental things like make sure that everybody has silverware and napkins and all the other things that go with a nice hot meal. Yes. So I'm looking forward to it. I've been to one of their Sunday dinners and it's worth going out. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So in the community, we've got lots of things going on right now. I just want to remind everybody that Crossroads Christian Church is going to be doing their respite night on the evening of February 11th, which is a Saturday evening. That time period will run from six to nine. Respite night is designed for families with a special needs household member, a child, a young adult, that we can't just call the high school kid up the block to come and babysit for us. So contact the church. We have contact information available to you. There's a good phone number for them. And they will have, first of all, the families fill out if you wish to leave your special needs child. Their siblings are welcome as well. And they also are in need of additional volunteers to man that because it's a very one-on-one -on -one kind of evening where they assign somebody specifically to each special needs individual that's being cared for in that respite. So keep that in mind. They will be having training 
you do have to be a trained volunteer and you do have to go through a background check to do that. But we all understand that, especially when we're working with young people, special needs individuals. Uh, we're kind of used to that anymore in the volunteering business. So if you feel that that would be something that would move you to get out and help in the community, give them a call up there. I know they would love to hear from you and they can certainly use additional help. They're gonna to try to do this four times a year. And I give them tremendous credit because it's a huge effort to do that. It takes a lot of specially trained people, people who understand the medical needs and the dietary needs and everything else concerning these young people who they are offering to care for so that mom and dad can maybe have that one precious evening to themselves once a quarter. Terrific new program. Let's really get out and support it. And speaking of supporting things, we need your support for this program. If your group, your project would like to come on as we did today, talk about your projects that are coming up, your needs for volunteers, and you can be in any of the communities that receive this broadcast, please contact us because we're always looking for new projects, new groups, and new places to volunteer. Doesn't have to be formal volunteering either. Remember that you may have a friend or a neighbor who could use something as simple as a wellness check. Or if you hear they're at the hospital, make sure somebody is coming by to visit, hopefully daily. That's a lonely place to be. So we're gonna see you soon again. In the meantime, happy volunteering. Thank you.